Cliff. What happened to the band? Oh, man, Stone panicked. The, the rest of the guys took jobs at Boeing. They didn't get it. They weren't with the program. But I'm solo now. I'm doing some really, really interesting things. That's my latest. Playing that record in France. So much care is put into the detail, and if somebody saw the movie more than once, you know you could look in these at these shots and see things that you hadn't seen, or you'd see the cassette that the guy is holding. Really, is a real cassette with like artwork, and just all that stuff really helps the characters believe that they're not acting; they're just being in a world we've created. And people watch it later, and they feel that world too. And so, one of the things was Matt Dillon plays Cliff Poncier, a guy who loses his band and becomes a solo artist, and he kind of loses his bravado and becomes this raw kind of artist who's on a street corner selling solo uh, cassettes. And so we had uh, asked Jeff Amen from Pearl Jam, then the band was called Mookie Blaylock. We had asked Jeff to kind of mock up what that sad solo guy's cassette would look like. And so he, uh, he came up with this, this cassette box and he listed five song titles of a fictional, you know, work that Cliff Poncier in his sad separation from his band had come up with. And Chris Cornell saw one of the cassettes, empty cassette boxes, and had an idea. Well, Jeff had done some graphic design for, uh, for the film set. And one of the ideas was, it was sort of a take, I think, on, on what Andy Wood did, uh, which is, he did, a, when we were living together, he did a bunch of four track kind of, they weren't really demos, they were just sort of uh, him having fun writing songs. We both did it and we would share them back and forth. And he made, you know, kind of like a, a, a solo album out of it where he just dubbed his own cassettes and, and um, it was just mixes off of a cassette four track and he put it inside Fallout Records, which is the, that was the indie record store in the neighborhood for sale. And I think Cameron was inspired by that to, to have his, his, uh, main character in the film um, do the same thing. And so, so his, the cassette packaging that, that um, Jeff did was, was just kind of identical to what everyone else was doing. It was, it was like a Kinko's copy Xerox, you know, on colored paper with, with uh, the silhouette of, of the character and, and some song titles on it. So it said Poncier on the front and then there were song titles that he, and Jeff just made up the titles. And one of those titles was Spoon Man, um, one of those titles was Seasons. Uh, there was one called Flutter Girl. Uh, they were all really in inspiring to me. And I remember seeing it and thinking, having this idea that clicked in my head of, wouldn't it be great to like take that home and actually write those songs based on those titles and you know on a four track the way that it's supposed to be and, and then mix them down, put them in the cassette and uh, like have somebody sort of direct camera to discover it on the set. And uh, so I did that, and I spent you know a couple of hours on each song. It wasn't long. I kind of rushed through it, uh, and it was it was really a fun experience because I learned that you know writing songs just for the fun of it, for no partic particular destination, can create songs that that have a life that lives on and on and on. Um, and I just thought it would be a fun thing to do. 
And so I did that and, and, uh, and then directed someone to get Cameron to find it. And, and uh, he, he was really, uh, I think he was inspired by it and he was really gracious about it and, and took uh, pieces of, of some of it, uh, most memorably um, seasons and wanted that to be part of the soundtrack of his film. We're listening in the kitchen to these songs and they're jaw dropping. They're beyond just him performing as a character joke songs. This guy dug way down deep and kind of created this, really, a, 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 a template for what he would later be as a solo artist. But it's like acoustic and electric, kind of like a Led Zeppelin mix of acoustic and electric and these incredible melodies and aching solos. And it just was the most meticulously built version of an empty fake cassette box you could ever imagine and um, nothing but greatness came from that music that he created. Mm -hmm. 